Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Steel Here Podcast, where I'm your host, Kevin Adams, alongside my partner in crime, Jersey Jerry. And boy, it is it is really starting to to be painful now what we have to see every Sunday out of this team, Jerry. We ever, Just when they want to reel us back in and make us think that there's some life and there's some chance that we might be able to enjoy some football through Thanksgiving, some hope yeah. and some prayer as the season develops, they shit right on us. It's heartbreaking at this point, man. Yeah, it's uh, it's not good. It's a tough time to be a Steelers fan. Tough time to do a Steelers podcast, I'd say. We picked a, we picked a pretty bad time to start one. But listen, um, I show face, you show face, and the wins and the losses. Um, we're real fans. Um, it's just you know, it's just tough. It's just tough, you know, with all the talent. It seems like we have on both sides of the ball. Mm-hmm. Um, highest paid defense. Um, they are they are so tough to watch, and on the offensive side of the ball, we just can't put a full game together. Can't nope. put four quarters together. It's always either the first half we're good, second half we're bad, or vice versa. It's um, it's not fun. It's it, it's really really tough to watch these games. Yep. Yeah, man. I mean, so last night was one of those times where you feel like the Steelers are starting the first half. You feel like they're starting to turn the corner now. Kenny's starting to see some things. He played great. You know, last week we had said we don't want it to become a habit where Kenny Pickett rolls out of the pocket, and that's his second nature is to just run. And a lot of what he did in that first half yesterday was really nice to see. I mean, genuinely, if you're going to look at Kenny Pickett and fully grade him on yesterday's game, you have to look at it from both sides of this coin. And the first half, Kenny Pickett looked really good. He looked comfortable. He, he got out of the pocket and he extended plays enough, not so much to make the, the first read with his legs, but to keep his eyes downfield and make some throws. And he extended drives. He found pickings, you know, right side for, for that nice touchdown. He did some nice things with Pat extending the play. Took and, some and shots too. Took he some did. heavy shots. He did. He stared down the barrel and he made the throws. And, it, and you know, I'm fucking tweeting out of my mind. It, it finally, this is a Kenny Pickett coming out game. You know, we're, we're finally going to get to see it. Eventually, he was going to put together a full game. It's just a matter of time until he did it. And then the second half fucking happens. And it's, <laughs> and it's all of the losses we've had up to that point. They all reared their ugly head again. I mean, it's the same shit we look at over and over with that football team. It's terrible offensive coordinator stuff. It is terrible offensive coordinator stuff out of Matt Canada. And, you know, we could say this every week, and I'm so tired of fucking talking about it because there are so many other things I would rather spend my time talking about. But it is the biggest, most important part of why the Pittsburgh Steelers continue to lose games is because they're getting out coached there's no way you can watch that football game and see how they made zero adjustments in the second half and the Bengals coach circles around them in the second half and you could see it you saw it by the product on the field and it's maddening as fucking Steelers fans yeah you know it's a problem when when a guy named Samaj P. Ryan who is a veteran listen he is a veteran been in the league for a little while Mm -hmm. um been with the Bengals for a while it's a problem when you got that guy scoring three receiving touchdowns on you that's a that's a problem embarrassing um, you know mike tomlin want, wants to you know people want to praise mike tomlin uh never having a losing, losing season i'm so i'm so tired of that yeah i'm just so fucking tired of that you you know this guy's supposed to be a defensive minded head co- uh, head coach um the defense just gives up way way too many yards they're on the field too long mm-hmm. that that 93 yard touchdown to seal the deal yesterday Backbreaker. was insane to watch i didn't see that coming i really didn't i no. I, I, I knew we had a bunch of stops but i didn't see a 93 yard drive for a touchdown i thought they once they got past the 50 i said okay it's okay they'll hold them to a field goal we'll be in the game all we need is a touchdown to tie nope boom dunzo uh curtains um you know and, and like i said before i'm not fully 100 percent out on mike tomlin Mm -hmm. Um, but, but, but the Roonies need to take a deep, deep look into this guy because he's been underperforming for a long, long fucking time, bro. Jerry, I'm going to, I'm going to, 
I'm just going to do you one better. I've, I've been fully out on Mike Tomlin for a while. And, and the viewers know that anyone who's, who's genuinely close to me or has followed me on Twitter for long enough knows that I don't think Mike Tomlin is a very good head coach for the Steelers right now. Could he go somewhere else and find success and all that? And everyone says, oh, he'll have a job before he gets to the parking lot. And fucking that's great. That's great. Somebody else can take him. But what we continue to see over and over, I'm done looking at it, man. I'm fucking yeah. tired of it. And if you're keeping it all the way 100 and you're being real as a Steelers fan and you see the same, same glaring weaknesses over and over it it all comes back to what we said you know four or five weeks ago Mike Tomlin is a defensive minded head coach we have 110 million dollars the most of any football team in the NFL tied up in that defense now is it tied up in just a few players yes it is but the problem is one of Mike Tomlin's biggest flaws one of his biggest flaws is he he does not adapt he refuses to change and you can see it and that's why teams are beating us more in the second halves because we're not making the same adjustments that other teams other coaches are willing to try and make to win a football game in the second half and and what did what did we see out of the Bengals do to us yesterday? They they just attacked guys like Arthur Millette. They they attacked the weakest portions of our cornerbacks, which yeah. that's a whole other that's a whole other issue that I'm going to get to here is how poorly constructed Mike Tomlin's defenses are. When you put 110 million dollars into a defense and you you combine to have something like 10 million dollars of that money be focused on the the secondary aside from safeties, that's a fucking problem in today's NFL, yeah. Jerry. Yeah, it that's is. a problem. It, look yeah, how many because- teams are running it up. The thing is, you 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 need a cornerback to yeah. lock down somebody, yep. and by lock down, I mean six catches for sixty yards. Right? You know what I mean? That that is a good game from a cornerback. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's a good game. Not a guy like T. Higgins putting up uh, nine catches for a hundred and fifty on you. That that's not going to get it done. No. Um, so I'll, I'll say this, and I, I got no problem saying it. Uh, I got no ties to this guy, and I can give a fuck less if it gets back to him or what or what. Robert Spillane doesn't ha- doesn't deserve to wear a Pittsburgh Steelers jersey. I don't even know if he deserves to wear an NFL jersey. He He's is terrible. god awful. What did terrible. his grandfather or something win the Heisman? Is that <laughs> yeah. is that how he got his fucking name? He's dog shit, bro. <laughs> He's, He's terrible. You're better off getting that motherfucker Jeffy from the Ringer to play fucking linebacker for the <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers because yeah. that that I mean he he looks like an idiot out there. He really does. Yeah, no, I agree, and it's frustrating as hell. And and like I've been saying, this is this is one of the things where everyone wants to to put Mike Tomlin on this pedestal where he's untouchable and nobody can ever critique him, and he's yeah. never had a losing season. How many non-losing season banners do teams fucking hang from their rafters? They don't. Yeah. It's a yeah. fucking irrelevant statistic. It is irrelevant. It does is. he have does he have good teams that get him eight wins? Yes. Does that amount to anything for us? Do we have anything more to show because Mike Tomlin's never had a losing season? No. But one thing I am going to say that people really need to start paying attention to is why are the Steelers losing? They're losing because they have glossed over this cornerback spot. Jerry, last night the Bengals didn't have uh, their number one running back for you know two and a half quarters of the game, and they didn't have Jamar Chase. The yep. Steelers were as healthy as they're going to be, as healthy as they're going to be defensively, and they still gave up 37. If he's yeah. a defensive-minded head coach, and, and in these big games, in these big games that the Steelers need to win, the playoffs for the last five five years, whatever it is, big games historically for the last four or five seasons, we're giving up 30 to 40 points with ease, yeah. w- with Easy. regularity, Easy. with regularity. So if you he's know, the focusing last time, on that and we're not winning, what's the problem, Jerry? Exactly, and you know, it doesn't even matter because the last time the Steelers put up more than 30, 30 points a game, they lost. Mm-hmm. That means That says to me, Wow, you put up 30 points and you fucking lost th- three games. The last three times they put up 30 fucking points, you lost the game. That means your defense gave up 31 or fucking more. That is, that's terrible. That's it's terrible. awful. It's awful. And it's awful whenever it comes back to how much money is tied up in this fucking defense. So when you tie all that money up and only $10 million of that money goes to guys like Levi Wallace, Cam Sutton, Akella Witherspoon, Arthur Millette, those are, those are our cornerbacks. Those are the Pittsburgh Steelers cornerbacks. And those are, those are the healthy cornerbacks. Like that, that's yeah. not even talking about some of the guys we've had to play that were not healthy. Yeah, you know, Wither- we Wither- have- Witherspoon was a disaster. 
Terrible. Fucking terrible, man. Uh, Witherspoon didn't d- doesn't look good at all this season. Uh, Levi Wallace is hit or miss. I mean, he's getting fucking cooked all over the field. Arthur Millette is not very good at all. No. It's because these are a bunch of guys that are number twos. These are a number- bunch of guys that are number twos and number threes, and unfortunately, the Pittsburgh Steelers pick their cornerbacks out of the scrap heap pile, and we're yeah. fucking looking at it. Jerry, I'm going to read do- you. Go I'll ahead. do one better for you. These guys, these guys, listen, listen close, listen close. These guys are not number twos. These guys are not number threes. These these guys are practice squad players. Let's get real. Yeah, they're, no, practice, agreed. they're practice squad players. Um, <laughs> those are those, those guys deserve to belong on the practice squad. These guys can't compete. I mean, right. they just they just get cooked, bro. Mm-hmm. Every game. I mean, you've seen it in the Bills game. You've seen it in the Eagles game. You've seen it in this game. These guys are slow. They're not physical. Mm-hmm. They don't they don't know what to do when the ball's in the air. Um, they have no no pass deflection skills. Nothing. Nothing. And and it's maddening. And it's maddening because it done it didn't have to be that way. <laughs> the, the Pittsburgh Steelers have fundamentally <laughs> missed. <laughs> fucking gum yeah, it makes me sick too jerry it makes me fucking sick too fucking the, the steelers have fundamentally missed on cornerback for far too long aside from the guys we just named levi wallace cam sutton Kella weatherspoon arthur millette i'm gonna read you the 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 starting cornerbacks for the steelers dating all the way back to 20 2012 all right it, it runs down a list it goes cody sensible with joe hayden joe hayden is the only mainstay through most of these and joe joe hayden is the only good cornerback we've legitimately had aside from cam sutton who shouldn't play in the number one he needs to be inside the slot since Keep probably it all the way 100 taylor. since since probably ike taylor no ike taylor yep ike taylor and and william gay uh ross cockrell bryce mccain antoine blake Artie burns cody sensible these Horrible. are the steelers number one and number two cornerbacks for the last 10 years yeah what and they, those guys are terrible yeah, and the game has developed now into a passing league, you know, Big over the time. last decade. So, I mean, you need you need cornerbacks li- like physical guys um, that are good. You you can't you can't win games with guys that are horrible like that. No, and 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 it doesn't help whenever whenever you have guys who you pay all that money to that rush the passer if they're not getting home because no. then those guys that we just named these bunch of practice squad bums like you say these guys get fucking exposed by guys that like T Higgins uh, yeah. like Tyler Boyd no disrespect to either of those guys but they're not number one wide receivers and they're no. playing they they lit us the fuck up we couldn't get off the field the Steelers gave up something like three three eighty eighty five plus yard drives yesterday for touchdowns that's embarrassing man that's, that's bad. fucking bad football whenever you pay that much money to a defense so he, he, this is why i call for mike tomlin's head because if he is a defensive minded head coach and he constructs these rosters which you're fucking lying to yourself if you say he does not construct these rosters the guy definitely has a heavy hand in who they oh, draft yeah. and develop if oh, we yeah. can't draft and develop good at the cornerback position which People forget when Mike Tomlin came, where did he come from? He came from a team where he was the secondary coach. Like he he coached cornerbacks in Tampa Bay. Like you guys got to fucking start keeping it real. This guy has fallen off. Mike Tomlin has fallen off. He's gotten stale in Pittsburgh. And until we genuinely want to fucking admit that and call it from the very top where it belongs and where it starts at, we're going to continue to lose games like we lost yesterday because the shit is a cycle that has continued to repeat for us. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure if you talk to any of the fucking players, they'll tell you, oh, Mike Tomlin's a great coach. Why? Because there's no discipline. Right. Why? Because in a press conference, he doesn't fucking call you out. There's coaches in the NFL, right? That'll call out guys in their press conference specifically. Oh, Tomlin yeah. never Tomlin never does that. He never no. does that. Never does it. No, which I mean, he'll him haul around it, which is fine. He's good at he's good at coach speak. Mike Tomlin is good at coach speak. He says some witty things and yeah. people laugh at it and he's never had a losing record. But I mean, if you're keeping it if you're keeping it honest with yourself as as a Steelers fan, how close are we? And how close have we been in quite some years? The game has evolved. The game has evolved and the Pittsburgh Steelers have not evolved with it. And if you can't see that, you're not watching other <clears throat> football games and you have blinders on and refuse to admit it because that's what it is. The game evolved and we has and we have not evolved with it. Yeah, no, and specifically Mike Tomlin. Um just I you know, there's times where I say, you know, he's he's just not the guy anymore for the job. He's not. Mm-mm. You've seen what happened, and this happened today when I was recording the pro football show with Deion Sanders and uh and Big Cat. And I brought up this point about Mike Tomlin and Deion Sanders was knowing me to death, 
oh, Jerry, you're wrong. No, Mike Tomlin's the guy. And Big Cat was like, no, he's the guy. It just takes time. Look at look at the Giants. Uh, look at the Vikings. They weren't good last year. They're good this year. And I said, hold up. Wait a second. The Giants and the Vikings both got new fucking head coaches. And right. now they're competitive. So you're <laughs> fucking wrong. Right. I- <laughs> Like it's just just because it's easy. That's that's everybody wants to say Mike Tomlin is a good coach, and and what a lot of people fail to realize is Deion Sanders doesn't watch every single Pittsburgh Steelers football game. No, Big Cat does not watch every Pittsburgh Steelers football. These are people that are speaking to something where they're not as invested as we are. And sure, that's not me saying I know more than fucking Big Cat or Deion Sanders, but I can assure you I know more about the Steelers than either of those guys combined. No oh, fucking yeah. doubt in my mind about it. For sure. So. Like I, if if it were somebody who was in the know of Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, reporters or somebody that I respected, I might tone down about it. But I'm gonna be all the way real with you on this. There's a lot of people in the Pittsburgh sports media that agree that it's getting stale with Mike Tomlin. He's oh, got to yeah. be on the hot seat. This is a, this is too many times of the same shit over and over where it's not gonna get close. And again, it brings me back to the last point I'm gonna make about Mike Tomlin. He had a Hall of Fame quarterback the entire tenure of his career in the NFL. Yep. Undoubtedly, a Hall of Fame quarterback, first ballot. He only won one Super Bowl, and it was with a roster mostly not made up of guys that were comprised by him. I'm not using the bit. It was Bill Cowher's team. You know, a lot of people don't want to admit that, uh, but a lot of the makeup of that team was built by Bill Cowher. Since oh, yeah. then, as those players have phased out, we've gotten further from winning a Super Bowl. And if you if you deny that or you don't want to admit that, you're fucking crazy because it's a fact of life. We are getting further, not closer, and we have gotten further as all these guys from the early roster of Mike Tomlin's career have phased out. The game changes. You either change with it or you get eaten alive in the NFL. And you're oh, seeing yeah. him get out coached and eaten alive quite a lot. And that's why we thing, don't make second half adjustments and we lose games. Yeah, the thing is with, with, with people of Pittsburgh, the thing is with me is I think they're so brainwashed because when Tomlin gets on a microphone, he says all a bunch of good shit that makes sense. For instance, like the Pivot. You watch the Pivot podcast with Mike Tomlin. I watched it and I say to myself, holy shit, after I watched this, like, you know, this guy's a really good fucking coach. And then what <laughs> happens? He says all the right shit, and then he comes out this year. We're supposed to be reloaded. Um, Yes, we have a rookie qu- uh, qu- quarterback, but, you know, we got fucking two elite, elite players on defense. We mm-hmm. got weapons all over the field. And what does he do? Stinks up the joint again. Um, And this time it's below 500. It's not 500, so it's getting worse. Mm-hmm. And he, and again, this comes back to he doesn't have Hall of Fame quarterback play to to fucking drag his ass out of the fire anymore. I mean, yeah. he doesn't. He does not have Big Ben anymore that can overlook some of the flaws Mike Tomlin has and its loyalty. We've said this very often on this show. Mike Tomlin is loyal to a fault. Matt Canada showed yet again yesterday why he is unfit to be an offensive coordinator in the NFL. And I have no idea how he has made it this fucking far, knowing how bad he was last year. And you you take him out of the equation. That's why Ben had all those comeback wins. But he has no big Ben this year. He has a rookie Kenny Pickett. And Kenny Pickett is simply not good enough right now in his career to overcome such poor offensive coordinator calling. I mean, and and it's fucking terrible. How do you score 20 in the first half and then the entire second half? You can't get shit going, man. Nothing. How many times do the Steelers run the ball on second and nine or longer? Yeah, they did it a bunch yesterday. I think I read the number. It was like they they ran it on second and nine or second and 10. I think I want to say 11, 10 or 11 times. I mean, Mm -hmm. you just can't, can't do that. Can't it's insane, it. man. It's so predictable. And this was one thing you and I discussed last night, you know, in the heat of it was the, the Pittsburgh Steelers had found success yesterday on the ground game or on first down. They had a lot of plays, you know, early in the first half and, and even at points in the second half where they would get six, seven yards on first down, seven, eight yep. yards. They, they would have second and two or four somewhere in that ballpark often. And what would they do? Most good teams in the NFL, here's what they would do in that instance. They will take an intermediate shot downfield somewhere around 12, 15 yards because you know that it's still a third and manageable play at that point. So why not go for a little bit, push the ball downfield? It's to your advantage at that point. What does my what does Matt Canada do? He just runs right into the teeth of it. We gain maybe a yard. The defense knows it's coming. You heard a bunch of Bengals players come out today and say that we knew what the Steelers were going to run. That's why we settled in in the second half. They run the same plays same over plays and over, over and over. over. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I forget who said it uh, on defense for the Bengals, but yeah, they they knew it was coming. They knew they knew what was coming when when it was coming. 
So, I mean, you got you got to look at that and say uh, something needs to change. Nothing's going to change in Pittsburgh. Nothing is changing. Um, this team, they're just they're just not a good football team. They're poorly coached. They have no discipline. No. Um, not denying the guy's heart and saying they don't try. I'm sure they try, but you know, there's one guy I wanted to bring up that you can see. Uh, you know, he hasn't had as many drops this year, but this guy gives up a lot uh, on his routes, and I noticed it watching the game back over again. Deontay Johnson and this motherfucker has the nerve to to come out yesterday or two days ago, whatever it was. Uh, I think it was yesterday, and mm-hmm. saying he's he's frustrated. He's not getting the ball. You, you, the reason you're not getting the ball, one, is because you're probably not open. Two, you're giving up on your fucking routes. You just stop during your routes. And three, George Pickens is far superior to you. Oh, without a doubt. <laughs> without a doubt, George Pickens is hands down a better wide receiver than Deontay Johnson right now. You, you see you see George Pickens do things that Deontay Johnson simply just cannot do. Deontay Johnson they, is they not should a physical have just let wide him receiver. Walk. They should have let him walk. They yep. should have not paid him and let him walk. I don't even want to deal with him for another year. I no, really it's 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 frustrating, and and you know he's coming out saying that he that he is open and Kenny needs to get him the ball and things of that nature. And all that does is just light a fire because we're losing now. Everyone's pointing fingers, and it's and it's like yes, yeah, Kenny missing him sometimes. Yes, Kenny's missing him sometimes, but it's just maybe maybe George Pickens is just more open. Uh, maybe he has a better rapport with Poor, with Kenny. Yeah. You know, George. I mean, a lot of these things come into play when you when you have a quarterback that's played six seven starts in the NFL. So this is where. Uh, a mature veteran would just keep his mouth shut in private. He would say things like Kenny on this play, like I'm going to be open, you know, let's work exactly. through this, sit down with him, pull him to the side. Anytime you go out to the microphone and, and you put it into the media that you're frustrated with your quarterback throwing, not throwing you the football instantly. I just don't fucking like you. I just don't yeah. like you. I, that's not what men do. That's not what, if I had a problem with anybody, that's not how you, that's not how you approach it. You, you, you go right to that person. And especially in this atmosphere, when you know all eyes are on you, when every reporter is going to have something to say, guys like you and I are going to fucking talk shit about it. If it becomes mm-hmm. a talking point, you're already doing the wrong thing in my opinion. Exactly. And yeah. Deontay Johnson should have just kept his fucking mouth shut and, and look himself in the mirror and say, look, we're three and seven at this point. What is me publicly calling out? Kenny going to get us? Nothing. Nothing. It's not going to do anything for us. So I'm going to go to him in private. I'm going to be a good fucking veteran teammate, and we're going to work on these things. That's not how he handles things because he's he's a crybaby. He's a crybaby. He says stuff like, you know, I know the situation we're in and what type of year it is. I know it's a rebuilding year. Like, you don't go out and say shit like that, bro. There's no reason for you to go out publicly in the media and say certain things like that. No. And you're right. You're 100% right. Go, you know, you're a veteran on the team. You've been there a few years now. Go to him in private and say something. No need to fucking say shit like that in a press conference. You don't think, out of all people, Kenny Pickett's not going to see it? Right. Right. And it's just a bad look. It's just bad. You're you're a shitty teammate. Like, I I, I don't care. You're just a shitty teammate. And, and it, it, he's done other things over the last year that have led us. He was disgruntled about his money. He got his money. Great. Now he's not scoring touchdowns because nobody's fucking scoring touchdowns on this team for the most part. So that is yeah. what it is. But when you look at how many balls get distributed and where they're going now, you can see that that he is third in, in, the, in the passing right now. I mean, yeah. George, George Pickens. Pat. Yeah. Fryer Muth is eating. Uh, DJ's yeah. just getting getting glossed over, and you know that is probably something that Kenny could look at and and hope and hope to work off of because Ben obviously had great rapport with DJ. I mean, he yeah. threw a lot of balls Deontay Johnson's way, and he said Deontay Johnson was open a whole lot. But the thing is, you have Ben coming out now. He's also saying that I would throw the ball to George Pickens often, a lot, yeah. because the guy has superstar potential, and and mm-hmm. we would try and exploit it. So you can't really blame Kenny for wanting to sling the ball deeper whenever you have guys like George Pickens that are making those ridiculous fucking acrobatic catches over top like he did again yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, the thing is, Kenny just probably just trusts George a lot more. Probably right. trusts Pat a lot more. Um, you know, you, you see it. You've seen it, especially this game. Kenny's first look is usually at George. Mm-hmm. His second read is usually to Pat, and his third is, is Deontay. You see it. You see it in the game in real time. Mm-hmm. 
Right. And and so that's where, you know, we need to understand that Kenny is still going through his progressions. Now, as he plays more snaps and he does more things, he's going to much faster process these things. That's why they say quarterbacks make the biggest leap in year two. And if a guy really can't get it going in year two, then he more than likely is not going to get it going because that's where they the timing is much more sped up for them. Like they're a lot easier for them to stay in that play and see how things are progressing as they're in that play. And so right now he's probably a beat off. And when he's a beat off, he's just not seeing it. It, you know for what it actually is so could Deontay Johnson be getting open yes but it comes back to just shut up man just like just yeah. shut up we, we're losing I fucking hate whenever we lose and you have crybabies in the locker yeah. room and I'm not like, saying listen I'm not saying Deontay Johnson may or may not be open at sometimes I'm sure there's times where there is times that he is he is open he is mm-hmm. open. but the problem is maybe some of those plays your fucking offensive line can't do a fucking thing right. and Kenny just has no time or Kenny being the rookie he is probably doesn't see it right away because it's his first fucking year. You know what I mean? Listen, I, I'm I'm one of the biggest Kenny Pickett backers and yes, I'm biased. I get that. But you have to understand if you're Deontay Johnson, he is a rookie. He's going to make mistakes. Do you think uh, Pat Pat Mahomes, I mean he's he He's, he's very rare. You don't see guys like that often who immediately just get it. You mm-hmm. don't see that rarely ever. He's excused from that because he just got it right away. I right. Mean, he, he also just, sat his rookie year. He remember yeah, Alec, yeah. Alex Smith. He sat Alex behind Smith. him his entire yeah. rookie year. He got, he got it right away. From when he was first thrown into the fire, he got it right away. You don't see that rarely often in the NFL, and Deontay Johnson has to understand that. And like you said, Talk to him in the, on the side. Maybe get some extra reps in at practice. Maybe after practice, stay a little bit. Hey, and, and listen, it's it's open. It's in the news now. Kenny's Kenny's a, a film guy. Kenny's right. a film guy. That's just what he is. He's been at all, his whole career in college. He <clears> likes <throat> to study film. Maybe say to Kenny, hey, you, I'll stay with you an extra hour or two today. We'll watch some film. We'll see what we can work on. This guy just comes out publicly and bashes his teammates. Fuck him. And I'm tired of keeping my mouth shut because, listen, Yes, we are starting to get connected with the Steelers and stuff like that. Yes, I have relationships with some of these guys. But at the end of the day, you're getting paid very, very, very good. Um, you, Are you getting wide receiver one big money? No. But you're getting a lot of fucking money, Deontay. Yeah. So guess what? Keep your fucking mouth shut, bro. You got your yeah. bag already, bro. Right. So like if if he wants to come out and say things like it's a rebuilding year and things of that nature, I don't appreciate them saying that, but it is. I mean, keep he, he's being real about that. So it's hard for me to fucking shit on that aspect of yeah, it. Yeah, he is. But but you don't have to come out and bury your quarterback. No. I just I'll never be I will never be a fan of that. I just think that that's one of of all the things I dislike about Mike Tomlin. He does keep a lot of shit in house, and I would prefer if it could always stay in house because I just don't want to hear about how they have these fucking locker room divisions because guys are going to eat each other's throats. And now you heard about Deontay and and you had Mitch Trubisky. They had their back and forth. And now you have Deontay mm-hmm. can't get along with Kenny now over whatever the fuck this is like. At some point, man, you got to look in the mirror and say, is it me? <laughs> I mean, is am I the problem here? Mm-hmm. Y- you might be. You might be, Deontay Johnson. Let's uh let's take some calls, Jer. Let's yeah. uh let's cool off a little bit. We're gonna we're gonna play some of uh, some of you guys' calls and uh and we'll we'll go over them from there. We have gotten them. We probably got like 25 voicemails last week. Nice. So we'll play That's you. That's awesome. Yeah, we'll play you a couple of these. Some of them are funny. Some of them I can hear. You guys are pissed, and I, I fucking get it. I'm I'm as frustrated as you are about this. Who's this gonna, one from? So this is from uh, Patrick down here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, he says. <laughs> oh, wow. I'll play you this one. Hey, Kevin and Jerry. Patrick here down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, huge lifelong Steelers fan. Um, growing up, used to watch Steelers on Monday night, the bus. Um, Tommy Maddox was quarterback, and then Big Ben came in. Huge, huge Steelers <laughs> fan. I appreciate what you guys do. Love the podcast. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, um, I think we came ahead in this Claypool trade. Um, you know, I'm not doing much in Chicago. We're going to get a pretty much a first-round pick, depending on how Chicago ends up. Um and I think it gives an opportunity for Sims, you know, the, the young wide receiver, to kind of step in and, and make some plays. He's electric, man. When he runs, it kind of reminds me of A.B. a little bit. Um, I like the one-two punch of Najee and Jalen. I think, you know, if you take out Najee, I don't know if Jalen is going to be as effective. I think the combination of the two really 
really complement each other. Um, again, this is Patrick down in Baton Rouge. One love. A nice guy. Yeah, real real nice guy. He said some things that are interesting. Do I think the Steelers came out ahead on the on the Claypool trade? Absolutely. I um, do too. And there are some people that have uh, tweeted me today, and they're like, do you think if we had uh, – Claypool yesterday they could have won Claypool helped us beat the Bucks he probably could have helped us beat Tampa or uh the Bengals yesterday yeah maybe uh maybe uh it's it's hard to say that he wouldn't have but it's also it's also hard to say that he would have considering we had only had you know a couple of wins while he was here anyway and the other part of it is you're able to see what we've been discussing this emergence of of George Pickens only because now George Pickens is being featured and you're seeing way more superstar potential out of George Pickens than we ever saw coming out of Chase Claypool. So I think the Steelers made the right move. Absolutely they hit a home run by getting that second round draft pick for for Chase Claypool. But I wouldn't ever worry that the Steelers are going to miss out on this season because they traded away Chase Claypool. No, I don't no think way. that that's the case at all. I just don't and think I, that's and, the case. And another thing I think that's not the case is Steven Sims is not going to be a wide receiver. He is. He's just not. He's not going to be a wide receiver three. No, um, he's a gadgety kind of guy. He's yeah, a gadgety gadget- end around kind of guy. Yeah, he he looked he looks good on some of his runs for sure. Did he have to start the game off? He dropped a dropped a kick return, went right in the end zone. I mean, that's, you don't want to do that. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't agree on the Steven Sims could possibly, uh, you know, take over like a wide receiver three type of position role for the Steelers. That's not, that's not going to be happened because he's not, he's not a wide receiver. He's, he's just not. No, he's an electric kick returner, an electric punt returner, and he's really yeah. good at that. And <laughs> you know what's funny, though? You know, last year we watched Ray Ray McLeod in that same role, and we would say, you know, Ray Ray McLeod shouldn't be a wide receiver out there. And we used him a ton in that wide receiver spot because yeah, Matt Canada know. doesn't know how to use wide receivers. I mean, that's yeah. fucking, that is, it is what it is. If, if they yeah. were saying that even when Calvin Austin had the chance <laughs> of coming back, you heard Matt Canada saying things like, I don't know where his uh, where his fit is in our offense. That's the problem. You're just not yeah. good at using talented wide receivers. So Sims, I do like him on the outside. Uh, as far as returning kicks and punts, I don't know that he's going to be an elite wide receiver, uh, end around gadget kind of guy. Absolutely, but uh, we'll see as yeah. it breaks down. Especially, especially because I I would like to now that we're three and seven and the season is is pretty much shot from a standpoint of playoffs. It's over now. It's finally oh, over. Yes, we can say over. it. It's fucking yes. done now. We're not making the playoffs. It's over. I yeah. want to see some guys get some looks now. I want to see some backup guys get some looks. I want to see some guys that are fringe players. I want to see them play because what better time to now use it and, and see what you got in some of these guys than right now. You know, I'd like so, to see Pierre get some reps too. I mean, he, he, you know, he, he came in. I forget what game it was. Um, he came in and, and he showed some life. I forget. I think we got to win that game. Yeah, Bucks soon. game. Yes, the Bucks. He came in and he mm-hmm. did, played very, very good. Yeah. And then you never seen him again. And and that's what's crazy about this team is we played better with the Buccaneers uh, whenever we had a bunch of backups entirely in the secondary, and then we have our starting roster out there yesterday, and they get fucking smoked. Yep. Uh, let's play another one here. Let's see what we got. Hey, what's up, Kevin? What's up, Jersey Jerry? Um, I just wanted to say, Jerry, we need you here coming to Pittsburgh to some games the rest of the year. I know you got frustrated, but we need the positive vibes. Look, I'm staying positive. We've got some games that we can win the rest of the year. We've got two second-round picks coming up, and people are complaining that we haven't been drafting well recently. Well, you know what? we got a new GM in Omar Khan. We're going to turn things around, and you want to be a part of that process to watch it happen on full. Come watch the games in person, Jerry. We need you. Yeah, Start paying for my flight. How about that? We'll start there. (laughs) Start paying for my flight and tickets. We'll start there. (laughs) Hey, listen, I'd I'd love to be in Pittsburgh. I really would. I, I love the city. I think it's a great city. I'd love to live there one day. Um, But, you know, I... My life is here in Pittsburgh, uh, I, and I consider myself, yeah, I'm a, I'm a part of the Steelers. I mean, I fucking watch every game. I'm a big fan. I do a show on it. I don't know how much more involved you can get being, being in a different state, but 
I try my best. <laughs> they want you in this stadium, Jer. They want yeah. you in the stadium, which I don't know why. Uh, you, you, you came to the Jets game, we lost. We went to Miami, we lost. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. guys are asking for you, you want you want you want us to lose out. But I'll get yeah. Jerry here every fucking weekend. <laughs> if that's if that's what you're asking for here. Yeah, you know there was a. I got a fun staff for the people, and it's not football related. Uh, the last. 11 yeah no yes 11 the last 11 times i've been to yankee stadium they have lost <laughs> oh, Jer. I, we can't have a run like that for the steelers no. we can't have a run like that no, but... this, 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 just the curse of the jerry bambino oh <laughs> bad news Jer. Bad, 11 bad. in a row that's 11 in a terrible. row <laughs> yeah the last one you see me uh behind the dugout giving a double fucking bird so oh, i saw that one i saw that one <laughs> Yep, Jerry, you're wrong. gonna enjoy you're gonna enjoy this last call. So this will be the last one we play, and we encourage you guys continue to continue to leave us voicemails on the Steel Here hotline. You'll find that number. It's on the Twitter. Uh, it is also four one two. Read it to you one more time here. It is four one two two five nine three three six two. This one's this one's a little bit racy, Jerry. So uh, mm-hmm. brace yourself. Yo, boys, big fan of the show. Uh, Eric here, calling from Maryland. Um, Kenny Pickett fucking sucks. I know it's super early, but what we're watching is really, really fucking frustrating. And you'd think he would just be getting better every single game, and he's getting fucking worse. He's missing open throws. He has zero fucking awareness of the pocket, and it's very frustrating watching this bullshit happen. At this point of the season... We want to keep fucking losing, but the problem is they make it a fucking game, and you're into it, and you give a shit. I know you boys feel the same way. Love the show. Keep it up. Thanks for uh, taking the call. <laughs> what do you think about <laughs> that, Jared? The, the, the best part of it is I, I know you guys feel the same. <laughs> I mean, listen, bro. Uh, it's I mean, it sounds like you had a couple too many cold ones. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I do run a private Zoom meeting for my anybody who's sober out there every Tuesday night. Eric, more than welcome to join if you have a problem with the drinking. If not, <laughs> we'll keep it moving. But this is this is just what it is in Pittsburgh. Half of Pittsburgh hates Kenny Pickett, and the half of them, half the other half are, are behind him and are rooting for him. And they do see the flashes that he, he has shown um, mm-hmm. in some games this year. I'm not. I'm not totally out, uh, and I think sane Pittsburgh fans um, are not totally out on Kenny Pickett. It's just way too early, yeah. and it's hard to really get a good read on him when. You, and the people who are out on him, right, are the same people who are bashing Matt Canada. So right. how can you really get a good look at the guy? You know what I mean? How can right. you really get a good look at him? And and look. Kenny Pickett, again, uh, did he have a great 60-minute football game against the Bengals? No, he did not. No, he didn't. No. He didn't, Jerry, and we can't sugarcoat it. Obviously, it's hard. Some of the things that we we would say or not say, that obviously, you guys know Jerry is friends with Kenny. So it's hard to completely say anything off the wall. It's just not It's not going to happen, and if you guys want that, it's probably not going to be the case. But yeah, I no. have the ability to say a lot of fucking things, and so I'm yeah. just going to be blatant, blatantly honest about this. Kenny Pickett has not played 60 minutes of football yet. We have not seen 60-minute football game. I bet you Kenny would say that because he's, he's not, he's not going to fucking lie about his performance. No, I'm sure having he would Having said too. that, having said that, Jerry, what Kenny did yesterday in the first half is exactly what we're expecting to see. I would rather have a guy that can do it for half a football than not be able to do it at all, though. Because what that means to me is he has the potential to do it. Kenny Pickett had, he scored 20 points in the first half yesterday against the Bengals. It was the best football game he's had in a half of football yet this season. Mm -hmm. but he fell apart in the second half. And it comes back to what you said. Was the play calling good? No, the play calling was pretty terrible. Did he make some bad throws and force some balls and have some low balls and high balls? I mean, he threw the ball all over the place. A lot of them didn't look good in the second half. Mm -hmm. But in the first half, he was crisp. He was electric. He extended plays with his legs. He got out of the pocket. He moved the chains. He played a lot of really good football. 
that's what you're going to see out of a rookie quarterback. Regardless of how well you think they're going to play, you're going to see those types of things out of a rookie cornerback. The only thing I will say that I can agree with on that is Kenny has a habit of, you know, he hasn't, he hasn't won us a game yet. We have not walked away from a game saying the Pittsburgh Steelers have won that game because of Kenny Pickett. And that's the one thing we need to hang our hat on here eventually, because we can compare these things to big Ben's rookie year. And we can compare, you know, Kenny and Ben it's because that's what we know. It's been 18 years of a hall of fame quarterback. And we want to look back on his rookie season and, and find that immediate success. Ben did not have the great numbers his rookie year, but he did win games and he won games on the last drive. He found a way to get the team down the field and do those things. Kenny just hasn't found that same success yet, but he is trending in a better direction than he was say four weeks ago when the turnovers were all there and he wasn't throwing touchdown passes and he wasn't finding open guys. He's doing that a little bit more each week. Guys, we just scored 30 fucking points yesterday though. We did score 30 points. Now we lost and we lost because the the defense again was gashed in the second half, Jerry. We couldn't, we couldn't get anything going in the second half. So three and outs piled up and it's the same reason we lost a lot of other football games, but Kenny Pickett was not the sole reason we lost yesterday. No. And a a big part of this, uh, we did, which we didn't touch on yet. Um, penalties killed us. They were drive killers. Um, especially when you, when you start a drive, um, in, in your own red zone, Mm Mm-hmm. And you come away with three fucking points. That's mm-hmm. a problem. When you start a drive on the Bengals 38 and you get pushed back due to penalties to a third and 25 and have to fucking punt the ball, that's a problem. Mm-hmm. That's a problem. Yeah, it's terrible. And, and you know, d- the Steelers took some momentum at several points in that second half, so it's hard for me to completely shit on the defense because they did do some things. They gave us some chances to win the game, and that play you're referencing where we started it in in our own, you know, in the red zone for the most part was that was that insane T.J. Watt interception. Yeah. interception. Yeah. That yeah. guy's a fucking freak, man. It is. Yeah. We we said it. You know, is he worth two wins? Absolutely. He would have. We would have won two other football games if TJ Watt was healthy. And the more I watch him play, the more I would die on that hill. Uh, but but you know, we didn't finish the drive. We didn't wow. finish that drive. And another series in the second half, you know, they run that crazy 35-yard ball down the right sideline. It's like third and four. We throw a long ball down the right sideline. George Pickens goes up over the defender. Eli Apple catches the ball. You know, he's he's sniffing his hand, flicking it. The mm-hmm. place is roaring. We have a chance to go down there and take a lead in the football game. And what's the next series of plays that are called? A shitty run play, a flea flicker, and then an awful third and like yeah, 15. Yeah, the flea flicker, like – you know, your, your, your offense is struggling to get first downs, you know, the, the the whole entire fucking football season. Why try to get cute, man? Mm-hmm. I mean, the Steelers came out in that uh, in that second half, run, run, pass, run, run, pass. We had plays that were uh, drives that went three plays, three plays, four plays, five plays, six plays. I mean, we just couldn't get shit going. To start the second half, this is my tweet of the week. This is from Alex Kazora. Steelers offense totally flat to start the second half. Nine plays, four yards. Nine fucking plays, they gained four yards. I mean, you can say some of that's Kenny, but that's also some terrible line play. That's awful offensive coordinator play. You know, as a whole, when it's not going our way, everything is falling off with the Steelers offense, and and you can see it. But again, it all circles back to it's really hard to evaluate these things whenever defensive players are saying we knew the plays that they were going to run because they run the same plays over and over and over. That's Matt Canada, guys. So if you want to fucking bury Kenny, you're going to have to wait another season until we have a different offensive coordinator and can fully judge is Kenny Pickett the answer or not because right now it's just about is how is Kenny developing in the games with what he's given and like I said he played a good first half he didn't play a good second half all I'm really looking for the rest of the way is one or two games where we can walk away saying wow Kenny won us that football game because that's what we need to look into as far as building into next season what's your what's your tweet of the week Jack my tweet of the week is from a guy who's been pretty nice to me he has some some very weird tweets at times. This guy who runs the Blitzberg account, you'll see him from time to time. This guy, I mean, this guy is, he's off his rocker. But sometimes this guy will take a screen grab from, like, players on the Steelers, like, out to dinner with their girlfriends and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And they'll, they'll post it on their account, the Blitzberg account, and they'll say, uh, Kenny Pickett at dinner on IG. And I'll be like, what? What? Where did that come from? Who gives a fuck? Right. So this this guy is this guy is definitely a space uh, space cadet. But 
but uh, he makes some good points sometimes. He says Steelers offensive drives in the second half. Three plays, one yard. Three plays, six yards. Three plays, six yards. Four plays, six yards. Six plays, 27 yards. Four plays, five yards. Four plays, one yard. <laughs> and that's probably before the touchdown drive. That's right. that's bad. That's really, really fucking bad, bro. Not going to win football games. And then what's going to happen? No. The defenses, the wheels are going to fall off the defense because they're gas. They've been on the field forever. I mean, it's, it's guys, we can... We can argue about this all season, and we're probably going to have to because it's not going to change. We're stuck with Matt Canada, but Matt Canada is a major anchor for this franchise. And and the problem is, you know, it comes back to Mike Tomlin is the guy that okayed it. He sucked last year. Everybody knew it. He came back. Mike Tomlin brought him back. I mean, how, at some point, if you're going to defend Mike Tomlin but point a finger at Matt Canada, you're not fully seeing it for what it really is. And so until you're what, willing what to admit that. Right. Sorry to tell you. I wonder what kind of dirt Matt Canada has on on Mike Tomlin. Well, I think we I think we discussed this prior. His boy Tomlin uh, Tomlin's boy went to Maryland, and Matt Canada was coach at Maryland. And allegedly, there's some there's some story. You know, I don't know that it's true or not. I don't I don't like to deal in the gossip land. But uh, Canada got Mike Tomlin's son in there. So oh, you know. God. Yeah, right. So he owes him this fucking favor, which is crazy because this guy deserves no fucking favors. He is the worst offensive coordinator in football. Yeah. I mean, Tomlin's son, he's not going pro, right? Ever? No, I, I don't think so. All right. I'm just curious. I mean, I mean whatever. Pretty I guess it was a favor. I guess it was a favor. I didn't know that at all, actually. So uh, yeah. this is the first time I'm ever hearing that. So uh, I could I could see there's a story behind that for sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, and it, it all comes back to, you know, Randy Feitner and Tomlin coached together in, in college. So that's why Randy Feitner was a Steelers offensive coordinator. He worked with the Steelers through a lot of that. There's a lot of nepotism, like I said, in the NFL, especially with the Steelers. Tomlin is a, you know, you're my guy. I'll bring you with me throughout the system, even if you're just not qualified. And again, Mike Tomlin does not have qualified coaches. And if you think he does, you, you're, you're out of your fucking mind. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, What's your all heart player this week, Jared? Because there were some guys that I, I actually enjoyed their game on Sunday, and I, I feel like they're trending in the right direction. I spaced out for a second. I apologize. I apologize <laughs> for that. Say that again. <laughs> Who's your all heart player? I was, I was, I was staring at this the camera. I was just fucking all heart player of the week. Um, man, fuck, this is a tough one. Um, but you know, it just comes back to guys making plays. Did he have uh, a weird drop at the end that would have, was an easy touchdown uh, uh, pass from Kenny Pickett? Yeah, but yeah. the Steelers ended up scoring on that drive. Not that it fucking mattered whatsoever. But, I mean, this guy, this guy Pickens, he's just just balling out, man. He's just balling out. He, he You know, 99% of the time, I feel like if a ball's thrown his way, he's going to go up and get it. Mm -hmm. um, and you even seen, I think it was a penalty or – no, no, I think it was on the uh, the play to Najee Harris, um, where uh, I guess Kenny was off or Najee was off. It was supposed to be a draw, but then yeah. Kenny got flushed out the pocket, and you see yep. George Pickens have that like short little five or six yard play. That toe tap was crazy. Yep, left um, sideline. Yeah, I mean, I I'm gonna go with George Pickens. I mean, I just love watching the guy play, um, and I just I'm excited for the future of George Pickens and Kenny. I really am. Oh, I don't know how you can't be yesterday. Uh, Pickens' stat line was four catches, 83 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, he had six targets, so he had six targets, which is which is nice. I mean, he's averaging somewhere around six, seven targets a game. Uh, my all heart player this week, it's Minka. You know, Minka might not have had the greatest game yesterday, and, and the Steelers' defense really as a whole didn't have a great game. But Minka Fitzpatrick just played football after having you know his appendix taken out eight days prior. That, that guy, to, to do that on a three-and-six football team when you just got a major bag and you could easily milk that out another week and oh, sit yeah. out and heal right and do those things, for him to come out and play football immediately that fast, that is all heart. That's exactly what we talk about, all heart being. That's the fucking definition of all heart, in my opinion, is just doing it for the love of the game. Yeah. Minka Fitzpatrick played on Sunday for the love of the game and for the love of his teammates and the brotherhood that he has with the rest of those guys. That is the type of, of fucking guy you can build around in a lock room i love that mentality i love that player this week for me it's it's minka fitzpatrick for the all heart to it. move this thing along uh we've been long-winded today jerry and i have been frustrated about this so 
There was a lot of things I knew we were going to discuss. Yeah, let's let's discuss the betting here. So finally, I've taken a lead. I have taken a lead over Jerry. Let's update the standings here. Nick uh, will put the the results on the board. So Mm -hmm. Jerry took the Steelers plus the five. Now I don't know if you got them at five, Jerry, because the 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 line, the way it broke down, it kept shifting and and shifting. Four and a half. So the Steelers yeah. lost by seven. So Jerry mm-hmm. missed that bet. He's four and six on the year. I took George Pickens over three and a half catches. He had four catches. Nice. Uh, so I hit that bet. So I am five and five on the season. Jerry is four and six. For those that don't know, whoever wins the betting ends up, the other person has to buy them front row seats to a road game next season. Yep. So hopefully that comes off of Jerry's dime. Uh, <laughs> This week, what do you got, Jerry? What, any any bets that speak um, to you? Now, this is Monday. We're recording early this week. It's a holiday week, so we do want to wish you guys a, a happy Thanksgiving on that end of things. Um, yep. but it's, er- it's early, but lines um, aren't out. I seen it this morning. No, I think there was something out. There was something out um, regarding to. I think the Steelers play Monday night. Don't Colts, they play Monday, Monday night? night football? Yes, Colts, sir. Colts Monday night Monday night football. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, let me pull it up here. I lost eight hundred on the game on Sunday too. So I've I put uh, I put eight hundred on the Steelers. I was fucking hammered. I'm be honest. I met so many so many people at the tailgate. They were like, "Let's do a Kenny Bong. Let's do a Kenny Bong." Yeah. And it's so hard for me to tell these people no. So I had a good buzz on. So I get in there and I'm Jerry's like, "How's the atmosphere?" I'm like, "Vibes are high, man. Steelers by four, guaranteed." Felt like yeah. one of those games that yeah. I was gonna leave fucking riding a high, and then we lose. So I put eight hundred on it, literally right at kickoff, and ate, ate yep. that one right in the teeth. Yeah, you did. Um, um, people aren't going to like this and listen, I'm trying to, you have to understand here, listen close. Uh, I'm trying to win front row road, a game tickets here. <laughs> yeah, so right. let's put that into perspective first before I make that pick. Uh, do I like this pick? I kind of do. I kind of do. And it's going to be the Colts minus two and a half. I think they're going to oh. give the Steelers a really, really big problem on the ground. Um, the Steelers have yet, to, you know, I've been getting burned. I've been getting, what, what do the people want me to do here? I've been getting burned all year taking Steelers plus the points. I can't do it anymore. I can't do it. I'm going to go with the Colts this week, minus two and a half. I think it's too much Jonathan Taylor. Um, will I be happy if the Steelers win and I lose my bet? Yes, I'll be happy for sure. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm trying to win a segment here. I'm trying to win the fucking road tickets. You don't like it. I don't know what the fuck to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> what a sellout Jerry is. Jerry's fucking going against the team for these front row seats. That piece of shit. Let him hear it in the fucking comments. That's some dirt shit right there, Jerry. Uh, I'm taking the under 39 and a half. Both of these yeah. offenses are fucking terrible. Um, the both defenses are fairly decent. It's gonna be indoors. We're in Indy, so it'll be it'll be dome. Um, I'm still taking the under. I mean, very rare are the Steelers going to score 30 points. I think more so we land in the 20-point 20, 20 ballpark. I do think the Steelers win this game. If I had to make a prediction on the score, it'd be 20-17. to 17. Um, I think the Steelers win this 20-17. to 17. I think they will be able to limit Jonathan Taylor simply because they'll stack the box. The thing that they couldn't do well against the Bengals was stack the box because Joe Burrow is so good at it getting the ball downfield. Uh, yeah. Matt Ryan's old as fuck. He's not good passer uh, at this point in his career. I'm not concerned concerned at all about him beating us through the air even with how bad our secondary is i think tj is going to have himself a game um i think the steelers keep this one low scoring 20 to 17 and and we get to, to four wins and seven losses but uh i'll be honest if i had to pick my ideal game the way it would break out the rest of the season jerry we would we would win games uh maybe two more games the rest of the way but we would be competitive in all of them, and Kenny would start to show real signs of development. Yeah, it's over, guys. It's over. So let's let's fucking if if we can if we lose the next eight games, but the team looks really good doing it. You know what I mean? Like if they're competing and they're in these games, and we're just losing by a field goal at the end, but they look really good doing it, and we can stack some great draft picks I'll, and come I'll back next it. year. It's a I'll lot more it. exciting to watch this team whenever we have some elite talent on the outsides, does it not? Yeah, yeah, no doubt about that for sure. Make sure you guys, if you can, it means a lot. Uh, like, comment, subscribe to the channel it means a lot. Um, you know, we're gonna keep doing this for you. Like I said, we get in front of the camera week in, week out. Win, loss doesn't matter. Um, so we're here front and center every week. Like, comment, subscribe to the channel it means a lot. Helps us out. Um, and you know, I think the off season, me and Kevin are gonna have a lot of fun doing the show. I think I'm going to come to Pittsburgh a couple times in the offseason. We'll definitely hit up training camp again. We'll get yep. some good videos. 
I think I think you know as the season uh, gets later in the year, um, you know we can uh, we can start to plan on uh, you know Kenny's interview. I want that to be a big one in in the off season. Yeah. Uh, you know, hopefully, you know, if we missed Pat on the bye, but I'm sure. I think Pat just Facetimed me the other day. A um, couple of his buddies are big fans of mine, so he wanted to know if I was going to the game this past week. I wasn't. We'll probably get him at some point in the off season. I think we could you know, make some good content and good videos for you guys. So keep sticking with us. Uh, we're going to take this thing to the moon. And and the quicker, the quicker, listen, this guy, who, who was the guy that was talking about JJ needs to be in Pittsburgh? I mean, you know, people are saying that on the street. You, you guys want me in Pittsburgh. I mean, you guys got to got to ramp up the podcast. I got to get out there. <laughs> right, right. No, sure. Wherever you find it, share it. Anytime we retweet something or we tweet something, if you guys want to retweet it or like it or comment under it, whatever it is, you guys know how social media works. That's how it works. Yeah. You get you get likes on it, you get retweets. It shows up on more people's feeds. More people see yeah. it. The, the the more notoriety and and you know the faster this show grows, the more we can do for the fans. And and it's this is a show for the fans by the fans. And so yeah. I want to always make sure we treat it that way. And and I want to continue to bring. Good, good content, real, real sports talk for for the the fans of Pittsburgh Steelers. So we love you guys. We appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe. It means the world to us. I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving. Wow, we'll see you again here after the yeah. Monday night game. Jerry, are you coming back this season? You're going to do another game this year? I think I'm going to do one more. I think I'm going to do one more. Actually, some some big news out of the Jerry Fragrance camp. Um, if any of you guys have been following the fragrance reviews, this this one came out of left field today. Mm-hmm. I got contacted by Lil Boosie. You know who that is? Boosie, yeah, fuck yeah. So Boosie and his manager contacted me. They want me to go to Atlanta uh, to do a fragrance review on Boosie's new new cologne he dropped. So this could be this could be mega viral. This can be <laughs> this can be electric. So I might hit the Atlanta game. I don't know. Um, that's a little bit down the line, but. You know, when did we play Atlanta? Is it the week after two the Colts? Two weeks. Yes, sir. Two weeks. Wow. The, t- the okay. terrible tailgate has already sold 300 tickets for wow. the Atlanta games. You guys will have to look into that one. The road games are always fucking a blast. We have Jeff yeah. Reed coming to that tailgate. So, oh, sick. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, he's going to bring both Super Bowl rings, he said. Um, so, it, it'll be a good time. He likes to party. Uh, yeah, the Atlanta game will be a blast. If you can make that lineup, that'd be ideal. We have a dope Airbnb as well. Oh, damn. You got an extra room or no? Yeah, yeah, we got room. There we go. All right, maybe JJ will come to Atlanta and do a little Boosie collab, too. Fuck <laughs> Two birds with one stone. Absolutely. Get the bag, too, Jack. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. <laughs> All right, we appreciate you guys. You have a nice holiday with your family. We'll see you again here next week. Yep, happy holidays. See you next week. Later, Jack. We're here. We're still here. We are still here.